Okay, guys, we're going to cause some trouble. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what the idea was, okay? The idea is, this is the, uh, this is the uh, manifold I sent over to Eric, and he dyno tested it, did real well. Well, I was talking to Wiffy, and I said, man, I would love to get some of the stock manifolds and compare them. I mean, compare them to a brand new Holly split and see if I, uh, what I did right, it's a learning exercise. What I did right can make that one make, I, I think it was 64 foot pounds at 4,000 RPM and 47 horsepower more than this one. This is, this is the Vic, this is Super Victor. In reality, this manifold came quite close to mine, but I still beat it by a decent amount. And that's the Victor Jr. It's a much smaller manifold. We're going to take some measurements and stuff on it. But uh, this is going to be a teaser. I'm not, I'm not hitting on all eight, so forgive me. But I told Wiffy that I said I'd like to, you know, do this comparison. And uh, before I knew it, this stuff was at the uh, front door. So, I mean, there is a method to her madness. She, uh, she's working towards some serious goals. And uh, you know who has to get it all done, right? So, let's take a quick look at... I mean, if you could take a look at this. Both of these are on the same piece of uh, heavy plastic I keep on the bench. The uh, Super Victor is way tall compared to the... Victor Jr. Huge difference in height. Sorry guys, I got to one one hand it. About seven and a quarter. Okay. About six for the Vic Jr. And the Holly looks to be right about seven. So Super Victor is actually a taller design than the Holly didn't do nearly as well and I need to find out why so what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to test all of these completely stock and then I can go against the numbers on uh, the one I poured it out and hopefully there's something to be learned I mean let's take a quick look at the the stock plenums and you can see how they they went about things a little bit differently from one to the other Let's shine some light through that thing. Okay, we'll do the Super Victor first. Let's get a height on that outer port. About looks like about three and a half inch tall. Seems to be more like three and a quarter inch tall. Now that's our Vic Jr. Okay, this is a little more difficult to measure because of the shape of the the shape of the runner is so much different. Let's see if I can get a number for you guys. All right, I'm gonna say it's three and a quarter, but it's measured it's measured all the way down here. You can see you can see they have a, a big bell mouth that goes into the plant there. The Vic Jr. kind of goes straight into the plenum. Okay, it's got a pretty, pretty hard uh, radius edge there. And the Super Victor does have a bit of a radius that goes in, but it's a much taller design with a, a much better radius coming into the top of the runners. Okay, we'll take a look right down the throat of the Vic Jr. And in reality, it's... It reminds me a lot of the old, you know, small block, small block Chevy Vic Jr. It really has a very similar shape plenum in it. Okay. But it's a nice, it's a nice design. The only thing I'm not really thrilled at is, is our angle of change here. Now, one thing about intake manifolds, when you change... You change this, you're going to change your reflecting point 
for your wave. So before you just hack that out, pay a little attention to what you're doing. Now, as a typical single plane, we've done this with Ford manifolds already, you measured all, all of the runners, and they're all tuned for different frequencies. You can go back in uh, some of my archives, and uh, we, went, we went pretty far down the rabbit hole on that. Well, obviously, since this is taller, right, every runner is quite a bit longer. Now, we'll, we'll measure these, but that's, I don't know if that's going to happen today. All right, they are considerably shorter on the Victor. So, shorter means it's going to resonate at a higher frequency. Okay, so that's a higher RPM. So, in reality, the longer runners would work better down low. Something to think about. I mean, you know what we should do? We should take a look at our what our center runners look like. Okay, Super Victor center runners. It's interesting the way the the runner divider is done on these. Okay, if you pay attention to how far the runner protrudes into the plenum. We'll take a look at that on all three of them. They're vastly different. Okay, this is our Victor Jr. This runner is actually back further. You can hear the rain hitting the garage door. We got a, we got a nasty storm, which means I'm probably going to be get, getting called into work soon. Ah, the joys. So what I was saying is, this whole runner divider is further back so it's going to be shorter not only is it a lower design right it's got a lot it's got a shorter runner and here's the holly split radical different design this comes in oh, at least an inch and it's more than an inch at the floor notice the floor right? i don't know if i showed you the floor on all of them. i think i didn't all right here is the floor on the holly floor on the vic jr and the floor on the Super Vic. Now, in order for them to extend the runners, right, which makes them longer, which changes your torque beat considerably, they had to bend this whole runner quite a bit. Now, I remember when I did the other one, the center ones flowed way better than the outer ones. So, if you take a look at the stock design, the stock design leaves a very sharp edge here. But that's not by accident, okay? The floor is also set up, and the roof is set up. What I wound up doing was I changed all of those to limit how much air we get down the center and put more air towards the ends. Was I right? I don't know. That's why when Eric asked for LS3 stuff to get tested, I sent my manifold in in a hurry and thanked him because... That's one of those things I've been doing for decades, but I never had any dyno proof. Well, it did really well, so I'm, I'm thinking that maybe having as equal a volume of air for each runner has to fill the this, this cylinders more equally. Because if we have, we have inside runners that flow really well and outside runners that don't, Which one's going to detonate first? We'll leave that as a question, okay? The one that's really jam-packed or the one that's only uh, filled marginally, okay? Now, you're going to have to tune the entire engine for the one that starts to detonate first, right? So, that's something to think about. Okay, back on the Super Vic, we're going to see how they did this center divider, Okay. Pointy down at the bottom. It's got a nice big radius up front. Does not come into the plenum at all. It's actually backed out of the plenum. It's backed out of the plenum about a half an inch. Okay. All right. Let's see how they did it on the uh, Vic Junior. Okay, Vic Junior. It's backed up about the same, but notice how much pointier it is. Right. It's not as wide because it's not as tall. Okay. So, and the runners aren't, aren't as long, so it, it's pointier. Okay. One thing you really do notice is how much narrower 
this is. Let's do let's do calipers on that. Sorry guys, I gotta one-hand it, but we got this set right about maybe half inch, three quarters of an inch in. All right, this is a radius, so you have to kind of get it where past the radius. And when we measure it, we're about 1.16. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Now the Victor looks a lot wider, but in reality it's not. It's narrower. Now I'm trying to go relatively in the center of the runner, okay? So we've got a 1.12. Let's take a look at the holly. Okay, the holly. Let's get that right, guys. Just lower that a little bit. What do we got? Okay, the holly has definitely got a wider runner. Now, let's do a little, a little theory. Perfect manifold shape would be what? Do we use rectangles because they're the most efficient? Definitely not. This is more like almost a trapezoid shape, right? Now, some really good tunnel rams, they use the most efficient shape, right? They go into they got round going into a big plenum. Why would round be better? Less surface to volume ratio. Okay. So if you think of it that way, a short fat runner may have advantages over a tall thin runner. I think it has more to do with packaging than anything else. Getting the manifold to perform the way they want to in the limited area that they have. Okay, and then of course they have to work on the sweeps of the runners, right? Let's take a look at the front left, front left, front left. They're definitely designed a little bit differently. Okay, I mentioned this already on this manifold, right? It's got a radius on this edge. It's got a sharp edge on this. Let's take a look at how the Edelbrocks did it. This has got a nice radius around both sides. Doesn't If, if I was to say anything is sharper, this is a hair sharper than this side. Not much of a difference, though. It'll be interesting to see how these runners flow in relationship to each other. I have a feeling that the Vic Jr. is more balanced runner to runner than the Super Victor. It's just a feeling I have. Okay, now if you take a look at the Super Victor, the, this has, looks like a, a jagged sharp edge on this one here. Okay, and if you look at this one, these are even. All right, we're going to finish this up taking a quick look at the underside of the Holly split. The underside of the Vic Jr., which, as far as I'm concerned, has got the cleanest looking body and how the uh, runners come out of the plenum. And our Super Vic. You can see the bottom of the plenum is definitely a little bit smaller on the Super Vic because of the angle because it's lifted up so high. All right, guys. You know, there's a couple of things we probably should look at before I end this. Now, the Super Vic has got fuel injection bungs right into it. Okay? They're definitely a little bit different than the fuel injector bungs in the Victor Jr. These... Just by eye, I would say, they they eat up a little CFM more than, than the Vic Jr. Let's see what the Holly's got. Holly's got nothing, okay? I mean, it would be nice if they put them in there, even on the outside. That way, if you wanted to go fuel injection on nitrous bungs, you could. A little bit easier. You know, Holly does give you pads. Gives you the extra material there. That's good. All right, guys, I'm going to end the night by showing you this uh, DV video. Now, this is the, the DV video. They got 743 horsepower out of a 420. 
This intake manifold I did. This was used in the Race Engine Challenge 2019. The only part that I'm a little upset about is DV and Terry didn't mention me at all in either of their videos. So this is the DV video. I'm going to show you guys. We're going to we're going to rock it through the uh, the old amplifier and see what it sounds like. And the reason I'm showing you this is Brian Salter will permit me to be part of his racing engine challenge team. Uh, please check out his channel. He we need we need somebody that is interested in buying the engine and what for us to build it. So if you want a serious small block Ford, take a look at what Brian's posting and give him an email. Okay, guys, I actually wound up using uh, Terry's, Terry Walter's uh, video because it had a better uh, dyno on it. Uh, so, at the very least, I hope I get to do the intake for Brian. Uh, in reality, I hope I get to do a lot more than that, but I'm not... Uh, he's obviously the captain, and you know what he says goes, and I'm good with that. I personally will take some time off and I will go to that dyno competition. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to that, to be honest, guys. So things have been busy, downright hectic. And uh, thanks for hanging out, man. This is a 17 minute and a half video on intake manifolds and comparisons and design aspects. Not sure what I'm going to name it. But we're going to get some, uh, some serious numbers on all of these and uh, find out why this did so well. It's a learning thing. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.